So feet hip width apart and just scrunch up your toes a little bit here. Press your big toe into the mat and your little toe into the mat. Lift up the arches underneath your feet. Feel yourself anchoring down towards your heels. Soften the knees. Then you're going to tuck under your tailbone. So if you've got a tail coming out, you're going to tuck it under. So it sometimes requires a tilt on the pelvis. Then you're going to find your pelvic floor. Small muscle between your pubic bone and your coccyx and you pull it in when you need a wee. So pull that in. I know that sounds weird. Pull it in and check you're not holding your breath. Sometimes you pull that in and we, we, we forget and we hold the breath. So just breathing normally. Pelvic floor in. Did I just scare Toby? I've scared Toby already. <laughs> Next one, transverse abdominis. It comes around like a belt. And you pull that in when you're wearing sort of tight trousers. All right, so transverse abdominis pulled in and you can sometimes hollow that down towards the hips. Lift up the rib cage. Just draw the shoulders down and back. Find the length at the back of the neck. So chin slightly dips down towards your chest. So keep pulling in pelvic floor and your transverse abdominis. Keep it pulled in 50%, not 100. It won't stay at 100 for a whole hour. 50% is engaged, it's there, and you know about it. So keep that going. We're going to go to our shoulders. Hands on your shoulders. And we're just going to circle the elbows. Keep that connection down towards the ground, that little bit of a scrunching on the toes. And just start releasing, so as big as you can with your circles. Notice when you lift your elbows up higher than your shoulders that you're not losing pelvic floor and transverse abdominis. Sometimes we lift and then we lose that engagement, right? And maybe you can touch your elbows at the front. <laughs> we hold a lot of tension in our shoulders. And maybe even in the jaw as well. So maybe if you're tightening through the jaw, try and loosen off through the jaw, between the eyebrows. Four more. Nice big circles. May feel the stretch in the chest. Two more. Take the shoulders down and back. Tuck the elbows in. Palms are up. And we're going to do a scapula set. So take the hands to the sides and back to centre. So this is all for your posture. So Sue, so you've done all that driving on the motorway. This is, this is exactly what you need here to get your shoulders back. Sometimes when we're driving, shoulders come forwards. Pull in that pelvic floor, pull in that TVA. Should feel the shoulder blades getting squeezed together. Just check now that you're not arching the lower back and sticking your tail out. So tuck your tail under. Still pulling in core. Four more. And three. Two, and one, keep the shoulders down and back, we're going to go nice big wide circles, so we're not going to go up towards the ears, almost like a Y shape and round. And what I want you to think about on your circles is that you're reaching out to the sides as well as as you're going up and out to the sides, so you can feel like a bit of a stretch across the chest. And you can breathe in as you lift. Breathing out as you circle around. Still thinking about pelvic floor and that TVA. Notice when the arms go up over the head, sometimes we lose that core. Other way around. Again, keep them nice and wide. So we're reaching out to the sides as well as circling. Nice release. Four more. Try not to bring the neck forward, so keep that length at the back of the neck. This is always like butterfly, this. <laughs> Last one. Shoulders down and back, we're just sliding the hand down towards the side of the knee, and then recenter. Still got that core pulled in, slide, recenter. So, what I was saying earlier, we're going to work kind of on the fundamentals, like the easy moves today, but we're thinking about alignment and we're thinking about core. So here you're trying to keep the hips still, the hips aren't tilting to work the side bend. And you can almost imagine two walls, one at the front, one at the back. So if I said to you go sideways on, that hand goes down the side of the body. It's not going forwards and it's not leaning back. 
Four more. Try not to think robotic here. So try and let the flow. So let yourself ease down. That, I mean, that bottom arm is pretty relaxed. So shoulders are relaxed here. There's no tightness. The shoulders aren't up by the ears. It's a nice natural side bend. Still pulling in the core, last one. And then release. Gonna to go to our squats. So you might wanna go a little bit wider with the feet, up to you. Check the feet are parallel. Sometimes when we squat, we wanna, you know, some people turn the feet out. It's bending the knees, reach the hands forwards, the hips go back, pressing in and lifting back up. And again then, squatting down nice and slow, powering back up through the glutes. And again and lift. Now focus on those feet, so scrunching up the toes slightly, checking that the arches are lifted underneath the, the, the middle of the foot, they're not pressing down. Noticing what the knees are doing, the knees aren't pronating or sticking out. We're keeping all that alignment, squeezing the glutes on the left, and we're pulling in the core. Shoulders should be over, directly over knees. Four more. Looking ahead, try and keep the shoulders relaxed. Three, and two, and one. So I've got a breathing um, exercise now, which involves a little bit on the squat and some of the stuff we do for the shoulders. I'll show you sideways on. You can do it with me if you want, or you can watch one. So breathing in, interlink the fingers, take the, arm, the, the palms up towards the ceiling, looking up. Breathing out, round through the back, bring the hands back down, palms facing you, all the way down. Breathing in, interlink behind the back, lift up the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Breathing out, into nice prayer shape at the front. Okay, together. Breathing in, palms up towards the ceiling, looking up. Lift up the chest, breathing out, round through the back, all the way down. Breathing in, interlink behind the back. See if you can get the palms together. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Breathing out, prayer at heart centre. Three more. Breathing in, lift. Still pulling in that core. Breathing out, round through the back, pull in the tummy. Breathing in. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. See if you can interlink the palms. Breathing out, palms together at heart center. This is so simple, you can do this one every day. Breathing in, lift. Breathing out. Lowering it back down, round that, lower, that upper back. Interlink behind, breathing in. Lifting up the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Breathing out, prayer at heart center. Last one. Breathing in. Looking up. Breathing out, rounding through the back. Breathing in, lift. Breathing out, prayer at heart center. Really nice, and you'll feel that such a good release on the shoulders. So we're gonna go to our feet and our calf muscles now. So we're gonna go to a balance. So first of all, just, just put the weight over onto one foot. Doesn't matter which one, right? And maybe you're scrunching up the toes, maybe you're focusing on the big toe, squeezing the glute, putting in the pelvic floor. So that's your balance work. If you wanna work harder, close your eyes, but we're gonna take some calf raises. So we're just lifting up the heel, it doesn't have to be high and lower. Just lift and lower. So we're not going for massively high heels here, like leads on a Saturday night. Just go for kitten heels to start with. If you want to add in, you're feeling strong, then start lifting in. If you need help, you can hold on to something, it's totally fine. Think about what's happening with the foot. So the arch isn't dropping. So you're trying to control from the toes through the arch. The ankle is not wobbling. The glutes firing as you lift. So we're getting this really good connection from foot to glute, core to brain. Five more. Four. Three. And two. 
and one. And then we'll transfer the weight onto the other foot. So first of all, just find your balance. Scrunch at the toes, engage that big toe. Put in pelvic floor, squeeze the glute. If you want to close your eyes and, and, and work a bit harder, go for that. But when you're ready, go into your calf raise and start with the little kitten heels, just lifting up the heel really slowly. Keep the knees soft, so we're not hyper extending through that knee. There's a little bit of a, of a slight bend in the knee. Think about the connection, so you've got what's happening in the foot, that big toe, the arch, the heel, going up to the glute, squeeze the glute, that's in your bum, right? Pull in the pelvic floor, and the messages then go up to the brain. These are tricky, calf raises are tricky, they're not easy, and, we, and how often do we do them, right? So, five more, four, and three, <laughs> and two, and one. Brilliant, maybe a little bit of a shake. Maybe you can feel that a little bit in the calf muscles. And we're gonna come down, we're gonna meet in downward dog. So make your way down to the mat. Let's get that red. Okay. The so downward dog is like that upside down V shape. Okay, just walk yourself through your downward dog because you're just going to get this stretch on your calf muscles. Feet, knees, a hip width apart. Take your head in between your arms. And think here about your chest going towards your knees, yes? Yeah? So you're lifting up your hips. And if, you, you know, if you're a bit tight in your hamstrings, downward dog's quite tricky, but just give it a bit of time. If, it's, if, it, if it is too much for you, you can take puppy dog. So you come down, you've got knees under hips, and you reach your arms forwards. You take your forehead to the mat. Puppy dog's kind of nice to get the stretch on the backs of the shoulders. So if you're feeling tight, particularly in your upper back, take puppy dog. Just take three more breaths, walking through, or stretching the backs of your shoulders. Think about lifting up the hips. Obviously we're inverted, so it gets a bit of blood to the brain. And then we're going to bring that down, so hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Check your knees there, uh, hip width, so there's a little space there between your knees. Soften the elbows. If you hyperextend, give a little bit of a bend in the elbows. We're going to take opposite leg, opposite arm, and lift. Nice and simple today. Bring it back down and swap sides. Straightening out the leg, low handshake, and lift. So immediately you've got that wobbling on the hips, so think now about pelvic floor and pull in. That TVA pull in. And then just keep working, keep alternating, but the big focus is in keeping those hips still and pulling in the core. As you think about your leg lift, you think about you squeezing that glute as you lift. And you've got that arm lifting, can you get that arm up level with your ear? Level, level with, the, with your cheek? Keep working through it all the time. Like imagine you've got a cup of tea here on your lower back or you're trying to keep that cup of tea still. Try not to let it wobble. Take your time. Breathing out to lift and extend. Breathing in back at centre. So if you want a challenge, you're going to do this and you're going to lift at the back foot. So we're taking a balance. So it gives you those, those little wobbles and little adjustments. You've got to put in the core. Stop the wobbling. And maybe even you can, you can swap and not let the feet touch the ground at all. There's your progression. Four more. Breathing out to lift and extend. Check that glutes getting a good squeeze on the left. That core's pull up, pull down. You're not holding your breath. <laughs> Last one. Breathing out there. So from there, we're going to sit back towards the child's pose, so sit back towards the heels. Perhaps making a diamond shape, so join the thumbs, join the index fingers, place your diamond on the mat. Stick the elbows off the sides of the mat, forehead down on the mat. And just take a couple of resting breaths. 
So send the breath right down to the lower back. So from there, come forward, go back onto your all fours, but, but this time just shift your knees slightly further back than underneath the hips. Take your hands off the mat. So your hands are either side of your mat. So we're going to do a chest stretch, but it's also a push-up. So you're going to go onto your fingertips. Hands are off the mat, you're on fingertips. Breathing out, you're just going to bend the elbows, and your elbows are level with your shoulders, and then lift. So it's like a, it's exactly a push-up, right? But it's working with the chest stretch as well. So you might feel like your shoulder blade is getting squeezed together as your body weight comes down. You're pulling in your core, engaging the pelvic floor. And not only are we strengthening for your push-up, like your arms and shoulders, but you're kind of also working with your wrists here uh, and your forearms. So particularly good like swimming, yeah? Four more, breathing out, coming down, elbows, try and keep them level with shoulders. It is tricky, keep going, three more. Last one, breathing out. And then from there, come down onto your fronts. So we're gonna do a swan dive. So elbows are level with your shoulders. Hands are level with your elbows. It's breathing out and it's lift the head and the shoulders. You're looking down, breathing in though. Feet are just relaxed. Think here now, pelvic floor is pulled in. You're scooping your tummy up off the mat. And it's not just the movement for the, the head and the neck. So the actual neck and the head stay still. We're thinking more about the top of the spine. This is a posture move. Notice if you're pushing down with your hands to lift. So maybe even you could try now lifting your hands up as well. See if you can get to the same height and then lower. It's breathing out left. Breathing in lower. <sighs> try and keep the the toes just in, on, the, on, the, on the floor, just nicely relaxed. So progression if you want it then. So it's breathing out left, breathing in and breathing out, reaching forwards. Almost like that wide shape again, that wide shape. Bring it back, so elbows over with shoulders and then lower it down. So there's three breaths. Breathing out left, breathing in and breathe out, reach forwards. Breathing in, bring it back. Breathing out, take it down. Two more. Still engaging through pelvic floor. Try and keep the feet down on the mat. Last one, breathe out left. Breathing in, breathing out, reaching if you're progressing. Take it back and lower it down. Pressing into the mat, come up onto all fours. Take a cat stretch. So just the top of the back, lift up towards the ceiling, tuck your tummies in, go back to those tails and you're going to tuck that tail in. Just let the head drop down so you've got your chin down towards your chest. And just enjoy the other stretch on the backs of the shoulders. Just a couple of breaths. And just whilst we're here, let's take a moment to stretch the wrists. So turn the, the hands so that they face the knees. So just take a gentle stretch on the wrists. And you want to be careful there if you hyperextend through elbows that you're not pushing your inner elbow away from you. So you keep it soft. Think about, yeah, exactly, yeah. Just check that you're not pushing through. You can see what I mean, yeah, Joe. So just be aware of your, the range you have in your joints. So from there we're going to go to our, our plank. In Pilates they call it a front leg pull. Elbows under shoulders. First thing is pelvic floor in, TBA in, 
and then lift up the hips. So we've got this little bit of a space underneath the from from ourselves into the mat, and this might be enough, right? So don't push, don't push it. If you can feel that in your lower back, uh, that might be enough. If you want more, tucking under the toes, straighten one leg, and then straighten the other leg. You know where that's going. It's going towards the plank. I've got my stopwatch today. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Here we go. How how? God, you, how far can we swim in 30 seconds? <laughs> Trying to think now. I can't even remember. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's a 50, right? That's a 50 for a crawl. <sighs> 10 seconds. Put in the core, pelvic floor, TVA, draw it in. Shoulders down away from ears. Four, three, two, one. Lower it down, 10 seconds rest. Then we're working to that again. If this is super easy, just stay up in your plank, don't come down on the rest. We're going to do two more. Pelvic floor in, TVA in, lift up those hips. Keep the knees down if that's enough. If you want more, straighten out the legs. 30 seconds, off we go. <laughs> so I, I really notice when I do this, I scrunch up my wrists. So really think about little things like that. So try and release the jaw, keep the wrists nice and loose. Check you're not holding your breath, so you're to hold your breath and really plank. Then really, they really work on the, the abdominal pressure, so you're really drawing the tummy button up towards the spine. The arch, you're not arching in that lower back. Tuck the tailbone in. Three, two, one. Lowering it down. One left. Take a breath. Pelvic floor in. TVA and check the tailbone's getting a little bit of a tuck under. Last one, if you want the, the progressions, legs straight, off we go, 30 seconds. It does develop shoulder strength too. Shoulders down away from the ears. Keep focusing on pelvic floor, come back to that engagement. Thinking about the tummy button, that TVA, pull it up towards the spine. Check you're not holding the breath. Get super hard if you hold that breath. Five seconds, three, two, one, lowering it all the way back down, brilliant. Come back to that child's pose, so sit back towards your heels, this time a little bit different. Take your knees to the sides of the mat, so it's a little bit hip opening, then reach yourself forwards. See if you can get your forehead down on the mat. Again, you're going to just send that breath right towards that lower back. So from there, we're going to go on to our sides. So let's do a side twist. So you're going to make a little bit of an M shape with your knees. So a little bit of hip work too. Place the hand down. To your side. So here, the, the bit where your foot sticks out, you don't want to put your hand down there, so you're going to go to the other side. Lifting up, reaching up, breathing in. Breathing out, you're going to thread this hand through underneath the other arm. So you put a twist through the body and then lifting back up, breathing in. So sometimes you have to adjust, maybe take it further away. It's got to feel like this really nice natural line that your hand flows through. Each time, you, know, you can bend through the elbow, drop that shoulder each time you're trying to get a little bit further around. Get this lovely twist around the waist. So if you want a progression, this is going to work a little bit more into shoulder strength. So you lift up hand sort of just outside of shoulder, you reach up, breathing in. You breathe out the same thing. You're flowing around in this nice curve. This time you reach back towards the back heel. Lift up. So you've got that other option. Come around and lift up. Final one if you want it. Legs are straight. Top foot goes in front of the bottom foot. So this is going to be your hardest on your upper body. Breathing in, reaching up, breathing out. You're threading through. You're taking that nice line. This time, your stretch comes all the way down to your feet, so it's a little bit different. 
It's a different twist. You feel it a little bit more on the backs of the legs and the hamstrings. Breathing out and reach. So whichever one you're on, it's two more. Maybe you were on that one. Really nice way of getting rid of some toxins in the body as well because it gives this lovely twist around the liver. Let's bring it down. Straighten out the legs in. Maybe just resting your head up on your hand. Take one hand down the side of the leg. And we're going to pull in core to find that pelvic floor. Double leg lift. So already you have to work, right? You're already thinking, pulling in the core. I mean, I'm squeezing glutes. You're having to work because there's a balance involved. Now we're going to go lower, lift. And as you lift, take a little reach down. Hand reaches down towards feet. It's not, it's not like a, a massive reach. It's just a little action there. Fingertips are edging down. Little lift and lower. Breathing out lift, breathing in lower. Small movements, very effective. All around the hip, the pelvis. Strengthening all the little stabilizing muscles inside the pelvis and the hips. Keep one check on that pelvic floor. Sometimes as well, we're on our side, we lose that TVA. So check your tummy buttons, drawing back towards your spine. Three more. And two. And one. Top leg then, lift the top leg, either hip height or maybe a little bit higher. Flex the foot, okay? Then kick it forward. So you want to find about 90 degrees to get your stretch in your hamstring. Point the toe, bring it back. Side kick. Flex the foot, kick forwards. Find that hamstring. Kick, and then point the toe, bring it back. So the flex and point just really help with the hamstring stretch. So flex, toes go up towards your shin, come forwards. Point, come back. Now notice if your leg's kind of slipping down. So try and keep your leg up at hip height. So we're working with that alignment. And if you want to add in progressions, so place your hands behind your head. So you're kicking that foot forwards and then you're dropping the elbow back. Huge chest stretch, really nice cross body. Pull in the core, bring it back, touch the elbow at the front. And you can always take the leg slightly back in your kick. Flex the foot, go forwards. And maybe you don't get the elbow down, you know, maybe it takes a couple of times working into the chest. Two more. Keep working with the flats and the point, putting the tension through the leg. Brilliant. So coming back up and we're going to switch sides. So we started with the twist. So find your M shape. Now if you're ever tighter in one side than the other, just gently sit yourself forward. And just give it a moment um, to, to kind of give yourself a stretch. You can always do that if you're, you're ever tighter in your hips on one side more than the other. Placing the hand down just wherever it's comfy. It'll feel comfy, it'll feel like the right amount on the shoulder. Breathing in, lift. Breathing out, thread that hand through. Try and soften through the elbow, find that nice line. Breathing in, lift. Even if you did the progressions, do a couple of the easy ones. Just to ease yourself into it, pull in the core. You get this lovely twisting around the body. Breathing out, threading through. And another little option is you can go on fingertips again. See if you can get a little bit further in your stretch when you use fingertips. If you wanted the other, the other layers coming up, you've got that knee down. It's not directly under the hip, it's kind of out a little bit. Breathing out, threading round, so if you can touch that back foot. Feels like a slightly different twist. Still pulling in pelvic floor. Well maybe you, you like the top version, top foot in front of the bottom. So think about your alignment here, your hands in line with your feet. Breathing in, breathing out. 
reaching down, you're going to go towards those feet so you get that lovely stretch on the hamstrings. Think about your rib cage. You try not to let the rib cage really drop. So when you get to this top point, you've got the shoulder stacking shoulder, rib cage is lifted. Bring it down. Breathing out. Two more, whichever one that you're on. Front leg then, come down. We did the double leg left. Get yourself set up nicely so you can use that edge of the mat, got a nice straight line. Just resting your head. And it's really tempting to look down at the feet, but it kind of undoes all the posture stuff we do on the neck. So if you can look towards your screen. So just to start with, it's just that double leg lift. So that little bit of a lift, both legs lifted, pull in the core. And then lower. And then lift, this doesn't have to be high. It's just working core, pelvic floor. All those tiny little muscles that are all stabilizers in the pelvis, lift. And lower. I mean, you can notice what happens to the rib cage. I mean, you can try and put a lift in the rib cage. It does, it does kind of offset your balance, so be aware of that. Adding in then, lift, slide the hand down towards the feet. And lower. Breathing out, lift. Reach. And lower. Lift, check your engaging through pelvic floor. And lower. And lift. And lower. Reaching down. <laughs> Two more. And reach. Then take that top leg, flex that foot. Bring it up, maybe a little bit higher than the hip. Reach, coming forward, side kick, flexing that foot, point the toe, bring it back. Try and keep that leg up level with the hip or a little bit higher. Point the toe back. You're, re you're going to feel the release even on the calf muscle because you're using the flex and point, but in particularly on the hamstring. So if you can ease it into 90 degrees. Try not to let the hips tilt too much in there. If your hips are kind of tilting forwards or back, you might not get the hamstring. If you want more hands behind the head, work with that elbow, get that chest stretch, and maybe it takes a couple of times to get into your chest. So much of our life is about leaning forwards, even people using phones. I see young, I see teenagers using phones. <laughs> And I see how, I can see how their spines are just like going forwards and their chests are getting really closed up and a lot of asthma is just from biomechanical stuff. <laughs> Three more, opening out the chest, trying to get those elbows down. Feel the hamstring stretch, pull in the core. Last one, and then release. So from there, we're gonna go um, to a bit more abdominal kind of focused stuff. So lying on your back, bending the knees, shoulders are relaxed, try and check that the, the, the back of the neck gets pushed gently back towards the, um, the mat, the jaws nice and loose. So from here we're going to go for our toe tap, so put in pelvic floor, put in TVA, maybe imprint slightly down here. Lift one leg up to what we call the tabletop, right angle behind the knee, and lower. Swap sides, lift, and lower. Now this is your first layer. Lift, and lower. Hands on hips, notice if your hips are tilting side to side. So use your pelvic floor. Use your TVA to keep those hips really still. I mean, it's micro tilting here, yeah? but you know, concentrate. Think about what the hips are doing. If you've got the hips still and you feel strong enough, it's one leg to tabletop, imprint lower back, so it's harder work on the core, other leg to tabletop, and then you toe tap down. It's touch and lift, and touch. 
it takes a while to, de to, de to develop this core, but also if you're kind of tired coming into practice, then you're going to kind of um, not quite get the engagement you want. So just to stick it at the layer that suits you today. Toe tapping down. So we're going to put our sequence together. So those are your toe taps. Next, place your feet down, lift your head and shoulders, and we're going to pulse the arms up and down. Palms down. And we're not going floppy, right? We're staying strong in the wrists, if that means slightly, like kind of scrunching your fingers like bear claws. So you're thinking about the tension down through the wrist, your forearms are strong, eye gaze towards your knees, and we're pulsing, we're thinking about the imprint, the lower back's going down, we're pulling in TBA. Try not to hold the breath. And then from there in our sequence, we're going to slide the hands up towards the knees. The bottom of the ribs go towards the hips. Hold, keep breathing, and pull in the core. Three, two, one, and release. So we're going to do four toe taps, eight pulses, and then we'll slide up and we'll do an eight second hold. So I'll go on the first beginner's layer to start with and then I'll progress. You choose whichever layer suits you. So four toe taps, shoulders are relaxed, ready. Four, and three, hips are still. And two, and one, I'm gonna lift and pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slide the hands up towards the knees, hold. Five, oh, eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, keep breathing, three, Two, one, and release. Upper layer if you want it then. Four toe taps. Working with the imprint. Four. And three. Try to keep the right angle behind the knee. And two. And one. Lift and pulse. Pull in TBA. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Straighten the legs. Reach up towards the knees. Let's hold. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, keep breathing. Three, two, one, and release. Ready to go again? Toe taps. Four, and three, pull in the pelvic floor. And two, and one, lift and pulse, work your imprint. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, straighten the legs, reach up towards the knees, let's hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. What about one more? Should we do one more? If, if it's a little bit too much, go down to beginner's layer. Four toe taps. Four, and three, and two, perfect floors in. And one, lift and pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Reaching up towards the knees and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And release. Brilliant. Well done. Arms over your head. Straighten out your legs. Streamline position. Just scrunch up the fist. Point the toes. Push the backs of the knees into the mat. Shoulders, push the backs of those shoulders down into the mat. Squeeze the glutes, put in the core. Press the back of the head into the mat. Big deep breath in. Breathing out, just let go. Go a little bit floppy and just let go of all the muscles. Okay, from there, let's bend the knees. Find neutral spine, so maybe a tilt. Just get yourself <clears throat> on a slight imprint. Pull in pelvic floor, pull in TBA. Hands on hips, shoulders are relaxed. Sliding one here away. Bring it back up to center. Other side, slide. So maybe you feel your hip flexor, which runs kind of, if you imagine that your tummy kind of runs down through there, across the hip, front of the hip, down towards the, the knee, say. It's like a simple visualization. Just imagine that's getting a little bit of length put into it as you do your slides. So that's your first layer. 
Okay, you might want to stay with that and just working at keeping your hips still because your hips want to tilt as you do your slides there. If you think you've got your hips still, you want to work harder, go back up into tabletop, imprint lower back, and then from tabletop, pushing one heel away, so it's like that heel slide but hovered, and then bring it back. Swapping over heel slide, and back. So you've got that really nice feeling of length going into the leg. And bring it in. So just thinking here about your imprint, so working your tibia, working your pelvic floor, keeping that lower back, kind of a little bit of imprint down towards the mat. If you had a grape underneath your lower back, you'd just be squeezing a little bit of juice out of that grape each time. We don't want raisins. Or sultanas. Is it sultanas or is it raisins? <laughs> if you want a bit more, then arms up towards the ceiling. And all we're going to do is the, the middle hand's going to go to the knee and the outside to the foot. I'll show that again. Inside to the knee, outside to the foot. And all we're doing is this outside hand draws the shoulder down towards the foot, gives you a little squeeze in the side. It's almost a bit like doing a side bend. Take your time, breathing out into each one. Feeling that length going through that one leg. And the shoulders getting that lovely little tilt. Four more. Breathing out. Three. And two. And one. <laughs> Arms going up towards the ceiling. So hands are shoulder width, palms are facing each other. Turn them so the palms are outside. So, and then you're going to lift the shoulders off the floor. Reverse it back round, palms are facing each other, press the shoulders in. Shoulder release. Turn the thumbs out, lift up the shoulders, bring it back around, press them into the mat. Almost like you were, you were imprinting into the mat there. Really nice, nice way to release your shoulders, especially if you've been driving. Studying, typing. So if you can keep the back of the head on the mat. You'll feel, you'll feel that release tomorrow if you're not doing these that often. It feels amazing the next day. Add in, let's add in a little bit now. You need a bit of space over your head. Take out the lift, but turn the thumbs in. Take your arms over your head. Touch with your little fingers and then bring it back up to centre. Turn, take them back and touch, and bring it back. Now notice what happens as you take your arms over your head, your chest might want to lift, right? So focus on the core, pelvic floor, TBA, your shoulder blades pushing back into the mat, trying to keep your chest down. So don't let the ribcage lift. Take it back. If you want more, so you want to progress, go back to your tabletops again, so imprint lower back, core's going to have to work harder as your arms go over your head, straightening out both legs. It's called the double leg stretch. And the lower you take those legs, the harder the core has to work. So again, just being aware of the level you want to work at. Maybe even one leg, if it feels like you need to step into that one. So breathing out, double leg stretch, or you might just be working at getting those arms over the head, keeping that chest down, pulling in that core. Three more. Still working with the imprint, pelvic floor engaged. Two. And last one. So bending the knees, place the feet on the mat, arms out to the sides. I pretty much do this one every week. Breathing out, let both knees drop across to one side. So it's that lower back release. Turn to the other hand. So it's a neck release, it's a chest stretch. Just take a moment. Then breathing in, recenter, And then over to the other side as you breathe out.
and looking in the other direction. Try and keep the shoulder blades down on the floor. So if you want a bit more, the next progression, you lift back on your tabletops. Breathing out, bring the knees across and then lengthen out to the corners. So as you get stretched a little bit more behind the backs of the legs and the hamstrings. And you're working with the core, keep the control, try and keep those shoulder blades down, try not to let the chest lift. If that's a little bit much, you can still work at bringing those knees across and maybe just lengthening out the legs and work with the stretch. That's another option. Or just keep your legs bent, enjoy the stretch. If you're coming to this, the, if you're going side to side, just two more. Keep pushing at the back of the knee, work into the hamstring. And last one. <laughs> and then bring it down. We're going to take a little circle. So just hugging onto the knees and just take a circle with the lower back. So it's a little bit of a release. Circling the knees around. And the other way around. So we're going to use this circling and we're going to take it into our next move, which is called the corkscrew. I have to spin around sometimes because I have a cupboard <laughs> to, to, to uh, navigate. So if you want more, so your first area is to hold on to the knees and circle. If you want more, you're going to let go. So you're still working your circle, knees are bent, but you're letting go of the knees with your hands. So we're going to go into a corkscrew. Now if you want more than that, there's lots of layers to the corkscrew, you're straightening out the legs. And you start making your circles as big as you feel that you want to take them in terms of testing the core. So the lower you take your legs down to the floor for the hover, the harder it is for the core, right? So up to you, you might just be working with the bent knees. I'll give you another option. Again, you can take this with bent knees. Is to lift with your elbows underneath your shoulders. And then you can work with your bent knee version. Or if you prefer. You want to work harder, your straight leg version. Keeping that control, like Pilates is a lot about control and using the breath. So breathing out as you lower down to the floor. I'll give you one more layer. You take the arms straight. So this works a little bit more with your triceps. Then you work your circles with the hover, arm straight. That's your top layer on that one. Keep the control, keep pulling in the core. So whichever one you're on, just two more circles. <sighs> Lowering the feet down then. Let's take a shoulder bridge, so walk the heels a bit closer towards your bum. Maybe you can touch your heels. Knees and feet hip width apart, your shoulders are super relaxed. Just take a pelvic tilt. So if you had a marble on your tummy, you're going to roll that marble up towards your chin. And then you're going to roll that marble back down towards your feet. So super nice way to massage the lower back. So if you've got a little bit of lower back pain, shoulder bridge is kind of nice. If you go nice and slow, vertebrae by vertebrae. Stick with that layer, or if you want a little bit more, Tilt so your marble goes up to your chin, start lifting up the hips, squeezing the glutes. Get your chin going towards your chest, bring the arms up over the body. So you've really got that idea that you're resting on your shoulder blades. So from here, we'll have a go at lifting up one leg, so a single leg. And then the focus is really on the hips. So it's a single leg bridge. Lower it down, push up through the glutes, really focus on keeping your hips still, and then over on to the other side. Not, a, not an amazing way of imagining, but if you were doing this on a frozen lake, and you didn't want the ice to crack, that's how careful you're going to be when you do your swapping, and you don't want that ice to break. Pushing up through those glutes. Don't recommend that, by the way. <laughs> oh. Swapping. So this is 
strengthening the lower back and the glutes. Two more. Maybe you feel that nice stretch in the hamstring as well. Last one. So bring the arms back down, vertebrae vertebrae, lowering down that lower back. Just hug the knees in towards the chest. And then maybe you're happy to, maybe you can rock yourself up or come around to the side, come back into sitting position. Bending the knees, feet and knees are hip width apart. And we're just going to go to a halfway kind of sit up here. So imagine we're in a bubble bath, put in the core, pelvic floor TV in. Come down halfway and then coming slowly back up. When you're back up, we want chest lifted, shoulders back. When we're coming down, we're rounding the lower back, just coming down to halfway. And it's almost like the slower the better, so the control. Shoulders are relaxed. Lift yourself up. Think about the crown of the head going up towards the ceiling, lowering down. So the bubble bath is a good one because you don't want the bubbles to come over the bath. So it just makes you go really slow, slowly breathing out, coming down, breathing in, lift. I'm going to start adding in a few things, so breathing out, coming down, breathing in, lift, get that nice upright position, take a twist, touch the body, let me touch, touch the space behind the body, and recenter, other side, recenter, just halfway down. Rounding the lower back. Draw yourself up, take the twist. Notice the shoulders are down away from the ears. I'm not twisting like, like a, I don't know what that would be. Some sort of cartoon character, I imagine. Other side, get the shoulders down away from the ears. Get the twist in the body. Halfway. And lift. Take the twist. Okay, so that's your beginner lay. If you want more, then straighten out the legs. Press the heels into the mat. Drawing up, lifting up. Crown of the head going up towards the ceiling. Circle the arms down and around. Touch those toes. Hamstring stretch. Breathing in, reaching up. Got that upright position again. Breathing out, round the lower back. Circle the arms down and around. Full body stretch. Breathing in. Breathing out, circling the arms down and around. Like you're hugging a big beach ball. Down towards the knees, lifting back up. Coming forwards. Lifting up, coming down. Vertebrae by vertebrae is nice and slow. It's got that control. Tying it in with the breath. And one more, whichever one that you're on. Whichever one that you're doing. Last one. So I'm going to give you a roll back move, but um, it's not for everyone. So if your back's not feeling 100%, I, I would avoid it and I'll give you a stretch instead. So the stretch is going to be bring your soles of your feet together. And the roll back involves this as well. So whichever one you're going to do, you're going to start with this stretch. And this is such a great stretch for inner, inner thighs, right? Groin as well. So here's your nice stretch and you can breathe in, you can lengthen up through the spine and as you breathe out you can kind of relax and maybe work into your stretch more. So another version, you can take your hands down underneath your legs and hold on to your, ha hold on to your feet. Then hover up your feet, so you're lifting up your feet and then you've got this balance that you're working with and then you can start putting in core, right? So if you're not 100% in your back, you've got two stretches there to work with for, for a minute. If you want to do the roll back, check there's nothing behind you, right? Take your hands under, hold on to your feet, and this is called the seal. When we're upright, we're going to get a nice straight back, nice and upright, and it's one, two, three, clapping of the feet. Then it's roll back, round in the back, one, two, three, bring it back, hover, one, two, three, Round through the back, take it back. One, two, three. The trick is to get it back into that hover. 
that's the trick. You probably don't want a dog to help you on that one. <laughs> Somebody's dog. So, the trick, the, the hardest bit is your hover if you're bringing it back. That's it. Pull in the core, lift, try and hover it. Don't, put, don't bring your feet back down. Just last one. I'm just watching to see how people get on. <laughs> it's a really fun one. I promise I haven't made it up. It is a proper move. <laughs> Okay, bring it back up, nice and early, okay. Okay, come back around then. So we're finished with a bit more of a hamstring stretch, so we'll take a, a saw, so legs out wide. Flex the feet up to the ceiling. Imagine a big bowl of porridge, and we're just gonna reach forward, stir that porridge. So sometimes a lot of lower back pain can come from tightness in the legs, tight hamstrings, so. Just doing a little bit of stretching on them can help. So stick with that, or if you want more, arms out to the sides. This one's called the saw. Breathing in, lengthen through the spine. Breathing out, twist. Breathing in, lengthen. Breathing out, reaching down towards the opposite foot three times. Lift. And then the other side. It's kind of quite deep hamstring stretching. Try and get that lengthen at the center. Come round, two, and three. Come round, two, and three. Once more on each side, or maybe you're doing the porridge. Last one. <laughs> and we'll finish with some breathing exercises. So just cross the legs or anything comfortable. So any way of sitting comfortably. If, you're, if you get a bit tight, you might want to sit on a cushion. You want that nice upright position. One hand on your tummy, one hand on your chest. So we're going to breathe in and we're going to send all the air down to the tummy. So you almost feel your hand coming away. And then exhale. So breathing in, fill up the tummy. Those abdominal breaths. Breathing in, filling up the tummy. Sometimes in Pilates we don't abdominally breathe that much because we're so busy pulling in our core, right? So it's more of a yoga thing, but when we're stretching in Pilates, it's a really good idea to go back to the abdominal breathing. So your child's pose, downward dog. But it is hard when we're doing all the core work to do the abdominal breathing. So let's add in. Fill out the chest. Now fill up, I mean fill up the tummy, fill out the chest. So big deep breath. And then exhale. Fill up the tummy, fill up the chest. Exhale. Feels like you're getting maybe a, a half centimetre taller, right? Fill up the tummy. Fill up the chest. Exhale. A little bit more then. Fill up the tummy. Fill up the chest. Now really send it right up to the neck. You're broadening those collarbones. Exhale. And again, tummy. Chest. Right to the back of the neck. Exhale, two more. Fill up the tummy. Fill up the chest. Last one. Exhale, just rubbing the, rubbing the fingers together, rubbing the hands together. Get them really warm. I'm just going to place that on the heart, put all that warmth back in the heart. Keep it in there, fusing it there. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. <laughs> Namaste.